After watching over 100 Christmas movies this season, I got hooked on the holiday movies, so today I bring you 13 New Year's Eve movies. Number one, A Kiss at Midnight on the Hallmark Channel. I gave 1.5 out of 5. A woman who runs a matchmaking service is losing business due to an online dating site. Keep in mind that this was made in 2008 before nearly everyone had one. She planned to write this big expose on the site, so she signs herself up to figure out the experience. Her third match is with this guy, sort of. His daughters lost their mother and made him a profile and secretly set him up with the main lady. Later, she finds out that he runs the site that's putting her out of business. She then releases the expose, and he reads it, and they call things off between them. But then one of his daughters runs away on a horse and ends up in the hospital, and she comes to make sure she's okay. And she's awkwardly kissing the girl's forehead repeatedly while the dad is staring at her, the woman who's trying to destroy his career. They end up falling in love and getting married the following year on New Year's. The whole story is so bizarre to me, it's entertaining for sure, but also feels sad bringing the kids into it. They just met, but do most of their dates with the daughters. When the woman finds out who he is and knows she doesn't want to be with him, she still goes and has family dinner with his daughters. So, of course, when the dad announces they won't be seeing her anymore, one of the daughters cries out, but she's supposed to be our new mom. I feel so bad for the kids, but at least later she does decide to become their new mom, but it's still, it's... It's just icky to me. Number two, Royal New Year's Eve on the Hallmark Channel gave 1.5 out of 5 stars. Another royal one, the royal fantasy is strong within Hallmark. This designer is supposed to design a dress for a woman that the prince is supposed to propose to, but he calls off the planned proposal and falls in love with the designer instead. The woman he was supposed to propose to was an arranged marriage situation, but it still feels wrong to me. Number three, A Midnight Kiss on the Hallmark Channel gave 1.5 out of 5 stars. A woman is hired to plan an extremely last minute New Year's Eve party. This guy helps her on it. I don't really remember why he was helping, but they fall in love. Number four, While You Were Sleeping on YouTube and Disney Plus. Give this 4.5 out of 5. I found this on a list of New Year's Eve movies and I had to restart it and skim through to find the New Year's scene because it was only about 30 seconds long and I didn't even notice it on the first time around. This stars Sandra Bullock, Seth's dad from the OC, and Christina Ricci's dad and Casper. The main woman is feeling lonely at Christmas, her parents are both gone, and she doesn't have any other family. At work, she sees this one guy every day and has a huge crush on him. One day, the guy gets shoved into the railway tracks, and she hops down and saves him, but he ends up in the hospital. At the hospital, there's a misunderstanding, and his family ends up thinking that she's his fiance. She tries to correct them, but ends up going with it. Usually hate concepts like this, where the people don't just speak up and correct people, but I'll let it pass this time because I did really enjoy this. She becomes part of the family, which includes Komagai's brother, who she gets close with. When Komagai wakes up, everyone thinks he has amnesia because he doesn't recognize her, but he proposes to her anyway, and they try to get married immediately. She objects at the altar, though, and comes clean about everything and admits her love towards the brother, who she ends up marrying in the end, and gets to stay a part of the family after all. I adore this more than I should, and I've never seen Sandra look so beautiful. I highly recommend this. Number five, Sleepless in Seattle on Amazon Prime, but it's about to be removed, so I'm not sure if it still is, which I gave three out of five stars. A child is concerned for his widowed dad and wants him to find love, so he calls into a radio station. A woman who's already in a relationship falls in love with the dad's story, and they end up meeting at the top of the Empire State Building. I find it interesting how many holiday movies involve children being so invested in their parents' love life. This is a decent watch. I'd rate it higher if the woman didn't already have a boyfriend. Number six, When Harry Met Sally, which I watched on Netflix, but it's about to be removed, so I checked elsewhere, and it's also available on HBO Max. I gave this one 3.5 out of 5. This movie started with a man and a woman meeting, and the guy insisting that opposite genders can't be friends. I hate that idea, so I wasn't enjoying this much for the first half of the movie. But it ends with them falling in love and finally getting together on New Year's Eve, and I absolutely believe that relationships should start with them being your best friend. So I teetered a bit on if I liked it, but... I'll give it a pass. I still don't like his attitude about it, though. Number seven, About Fate on Amazon Prime, gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. Two couples sort of break out the night before New Year's Eve. The guy of one of the relationships drunkenly goes into the woman of the other relationship's apartment and falls asleep naked where she later finds him. 
He tags along to her sister's wedding, and there's random conflict until they end up together. I almost really like this, but I don't like the gray area on if he's technically cheating or not. Her relationship fully ended, but his was kind of up in the air, I feel. It's a decent watch, though. Number 8, A Long Way Down on YouTube, gave 4 out of 5 stars. This one I've actually seen before, and I usually try to only include films that I haven't seen before and I'm watching for the first time in these movie collections, but it's been so long that I barely remembered a thing, so I included it. A group of people meet on a rooftop on New Year's Eve where they each happen to be planning on killing themselves. They make a pact to try not to again until Valentine's Day and bond until then. It's rather sweet, but I feel as if they make suicide attempts seem more like a cry for help over an actual desire to end your life. Most media portrays it like that, and I think that's dangerous. Oftentimes, people aren't crying out for help. They genuinely want to be dead no matter what. A huge portion of the world's population has suicidal thoughts or even a suicide attempt, but are still here. I feel like showing that too often takes away from the severity of it and almost softens it when a friend comes to you and says they're feeling suicidal. You may brush it off and ask to make plans a week later instead of taking it seriously and being there for them right then. After all, your neighbor, aunt, and best friend have all attempted and they're still here, so this person surely will stick around too, right? I feel like media needs to be a little harsher with the reality of suicide and show that sometimes it wasn't a cry for help, but they were actually serious and did end their lives. I think this movie in particular would have been better if one of them had gone through with it by Valentine's Day. It would have been more helpful to the audience who needs the reminder of how serious suicide is, but hey, then they wouldn't be able to call this movie about suicide a comedy. Number 9, The Poseidon Adventure, the 1972 version, which I gave 1 out of 5. This is about a ship that's sinking and the passengers that are on it. Nothing more than that stuck with me. Number 10, About Time on Hulu, I gave 4 out of 5. A man who can time travel meets a woman who he falls in love with. On one of his trips through time, he accidentally unmeets her, so he has to try to re-meet her. I do really enjoy this cast. We get Rachel McAdams, Margot Robbie, Lydia Wilson, and Vanessa Kirby, all in one. This movie has a few moments that don't morally sit right with me, but overall, I do like this. I think he should have told his wife about the time travel, though. Hiding it feels like a betrayal, and not sharing a gift like that feels cruel. Number 11, Bridget Jones's Diary, 3.5 out of 5. A woman starts a diary on New Year's. Her love life is a mess. She gets with her boss who cheats on her and then lets an engaged man emotionally cheat with her. Like, girl, you just felt how that feels. Don't do that to another woman. She ends up with the second guy and all I have to say to her now is good luck. The cast of this is lovely. We have Hugh Grant seemingly playing himself as the cheater. Colin Firth, who's about to have another Mamma Mia moment on his hands swooping in that fast. Moaning Myrtle, who's still crying in the bathroom. Professor Slughorn himself, and even Pandora's mom from Skins. Number 12, Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason, which I gave 2.5 out of 5. Bridget and Colin Firth's character break up because she thinks he's cheating on her. She goes to Thailand for work, almost has sex with Hugh Grant, gets framed with drugs on the way back, leading to an arrest, so Colin comes to get her out. The first part of this movie was annoying because it felt like they were doing the same thing as the first movie, but backwards. But then she didn't actually get with Grant, and later you find out the woman who she thought Colin's mistress is is actually a lesbian who's in love with her. None of that makes sense, though. The supposed lesbian was always touching Colin inappropriately and was staying at his house even when he wasn't there and then it's just never brought up again to explain. It's frustrating. The whole arrest part was cringy too. The plot of this is all over the place and I'm not a huge fan. I already didn't love the character of Bridget herself but she's even cringier in this one. I did watch the third movie as well but there was no New Year's mention so it doesn't get its own spot on this list but I will say that it's stupid and I was correct about my Mamma Mia comment earlier. I'd give the third one two out of five. And last but not least, number 13, New Year's Eve on HBO Max. I gave this one 3.5 out of 5. I'm not even sure how to recap this one. There's a dozen, maybe even more, different storylines going on all at once, and the only connection really seems to be that it's New Year's Eve in New York City. I would have enjoyed this so much more as a whole New Year's Eve miniseries where each episode focuses on only a few characters at a time. The big, massive clash of storylines that the movie is doesn't give you enough time to feel invested 
invested in any one storyline. Each storyline has its own potential though, which is why my rating isn't that harsh. That and it's one of the only movies I could find that's literally only about New Year's Eve. I've come to realize that most New Year's Eve movies aren't directly about the holiday in the same way that Christmas movies are. That honestly made this list fly by though because it was less repetitive. I would like more with the theme though. One of my favorite types of movies are the kind where a bunch of things happen in one night. New Year's Eve is a perfect setup for that format. I was able to find some good new movies at least. If you have any New Year's Eve movie recommendations for me, I would love to hear them because it's really hard to find.